polypropylene ropes are spliced in a different way, but all splices of whatever material rely on friction to hold them together. But this is far from being a traditional fibre rope like those of sisal, hemp or manila. Polypropylene is the natural successor to natural fibre. It's a cheap fibre, ready, easy to produce, hard wearing and has a good strength. It has the big advantage over natural fibre, of course, in that it doesn't rot. The other fibres, nylon and polyester, are much more expensive and we tend to choose those when we require a higher strength or a greater elongation than we can get from polypropylene. Ropes have been used for thousands of years, but in the last 50 or so, as a result of advances in material science, there have been many remarkable changes in the materials used and the methods of rope construction. This is nylon fibre, which is being made up into yarn. The yarn can be spun further into strands, and the strands can be assembled to make a full rope. The process of spinning fibres is superficially similar to that of spinning metal wire into metal cable. But you should remember that polymers are different both in geometric form and in material nature, and that influences the process itself. Polymer yarn spinning machines resemble standard textile spinning machinery. Due to the small fibre diameter, very high production rates can be achieved. After the giant strander in wire rope manufacture, you won't be impressed by the size of this one, but its speed is amazing. These yarns of Nylon 66 appear to be almost stationary, but in fact they're being spun into three strands at about 30 meters a minute. The strands are twisted together to form a climbing rope, which then goes on to be heat set. But why give the strands such a high degree of twist? If we were to make a rope from parallel fiber, then you would uh, show the, the properties of the fiber that you'd used almost exactly. By twisting them together, we can increase the extension out of the finished product with a, a high level of abrasion resistance because of all the intertwining of fibers. And we can modify the breaking load to some degree. Polymer fibers don't always possess a round section. The polypropylene yarn on these bobbins was initially extruded as a flat film and then split or fibrillated. The resulting ribbons were spun into this yarn, giving it a rough appearance. Well, fibre film uh, is a split film polypropylene rope. It's a cheap and cheerful end of the range, if you like. It's, it has very uh, reasonably good uh, physical properties, but it is the least expensive of the man-made fibre ropes that we produce. Uh, the uh, rust colour is given by the ultraviolet additive system. Natural polypropylene is extremely susceptible to ultraviolet deterioration, but the effect can be minimized very dramatically by the inclusion of ultraviolet additives or pigments into the material of a sele approved selection, uh, such that the ultimate performance of a British standard rope would be considerably better than that expected from natural fiber counterparts. The stabilizing system used in these fibers is finely divided ferric oxide. This is one of the largest polymer strands made anywhere. Braiding has been used in the textile industry for many years, but it's comparatively new in large ropes. Though braiding of fine metal wires for reinforcing cables has been used for some time. These strands are being braided together to make an eight-strand rope used for marine applications, such as mooring a ship. Polypropylene has the advantage that it floats in water. You've seen the strands being twisted, but you might wonder why the finished rope is being braided and not twisted like the climbing rope. Well, braiding, in effect, produces a continuous knot of strands which can't be easily untwisted, making the rope a more stable structure, but less extensible. Braided structures are very useful because, unlike the traditional rope, which we've known for thousands of years, they don't depend upon twist to hold them together. So they can be abused, they can be thrown down on the ground, you don't have to lay them down properly. They're inherently torque free. By aligning the fibers along the axis of the rope, you can also give them a very high abrasion resistance. And by carefully arranging the geometry, a very high strength translation too.
This is where polymers come into their own. For absolute size and strength, this rope of nylon 66 would rival any large steel rope, but it's much more flexible. It's a double braided rope having a braided central core with a separately braided cover. This rope would typically be used as a hawser for mooring a super tanker and has a braking load of 570 tons. But there are other fibers which are equivalent to carbon that are now being used in similar composite materials. This particular one is known as aramid fiber. Fibers like this can be made up into rope. Advanced polymer fibers confer higher strength to weight and stiffness to weight ratios. They are between three to five times greater than the equivalent steel ropes. This is due to the complete alignment of the chain molecules along the fiber axis. Aramid fibers uh, perform uh, reasonably well uh, in, in load-bearing applications, but they do have a sensitivity in terms of interfiber abrasion. And one has to be careful to uh, design the construction of rope bearing this in mind and to um, either protect it from external chafing and mechanical damage or to um, take some other route which will minimize this effect. One doesn't have to be nearly as careful with the conventional man-made fibers uh, which sustain this sort of damage very much better. Here's a comparison between the tensile behavior of conventional nylon 6-6 yarn and that of high modulus polyethylene. They broke in different ways. The low elongation graphs show the difference. This one is for nylon 6-6, whereas the one for high modulus polyethylene shows about six times the breaking force due to complete chain alignment. We naturally associate polyethylene with a lower strength material. But the basic molecular structure of polyethylene means that it has the highest theoretical modulus of any synthetic material. And it's only now that people are discovering how to make use of that and to be able to turn it into a, a very high performance fiber. But let's see how a finished rope fails under tension. The split film polypropylene rope undergoes much higher elongation than steel or high modulus polymers due to incomplete alignment of chain molecules along the fiber axis. Several strands can fail under load, and yet the rope doesn't part completely. This is due to the braided structure unwinding. Well, I can't compete with specimen size with Ken, and in fact, this rope isn't being pre-stressed, but it is a rope that will experience stress in service. In fact, it's a mooring rope for a super tanker, and it's composed of an endless loop of nylon 66, which is braided. There are two braids, a core and an outer, and it's held together by a splice. In service, the two parts of the endless loop are held together by this polyester rope. But of course, nylon 66 is heavier than seawater, and so it would sink in service. So what they do is to add buoyancy bags along the whole structure of the rope. The structure of the buoyancy bag can be seen here. Inside is closed cell polyethylene. And of course, the buoyancy of this is very, very high indeed. And it helps to keep the whole rope floating. This is the critical connection between the ship and the rope. This is where the rope goes into a bending move as it goes over the shackle. It's protected from abrasion by this woven polyester sheath, and there's extra protection in this composite pulley over which the rope runs. And finally, there's a polyurethane shroud which protects the outer coating of the rope from the galvanized steel shackle. The whole structure is a marvelous example of material selection, each polymer doing a particular job in the right place on the complete rope. 